Hi, this is Kevin Gillen with Advanced Leather Solutions. I'm here to talk about an issue that I've recently discovered in a nationally published magazine. It talks about how to clean various uh, uh, items in your home, one of which is leather. Uh, what I'd like to do is talk about what this particular article references. This is September issue of Martha Stewart Living. And what the article says specifically about leather is, most leather upholstery is coated with stain resistors in the manufacturing process, but this wears off over time, leaving leather vulnerable. For stubborn stains, stains such as soils, blotting or gently rubbing with all-purpose household cleaner is the, is the idea. Choose one without bleach or bleach alternatives to prevent fading. And so that's the recommended um, uh, cleaning process, and I think we have a few problems with that. So what we're going to do is some testing. I have in front of me here a couple of household cleaners. I have Mr. Clean, I have 409, and I have Windex. I also have the MSDS for each one of these products. That's the material safety data sheet that talks about the chemistry associated with each of these products. These are all household cleaners. In the ingredients, there's no reference to bleach. And so following the suggestions in the articles, this should be safe for leather. But here's the problem, and this is really important. Leather, you see, has a pH that is not consistent with the pH associated with these, each one of these cleaners. This particular cleaner has a pH of 9.0 or to 10.0. This particular cleaner has a pH of 10.5. This particular cleaner has a pH of 11.45. And so here's what we've got. Windex, 409, Mr. Clean. Now we also have this other element here called saddle soap that people oftentimes refer to as something that's appropriate for cleaning leather. Now it turns out that saddle soap is like a generic name. There are many different manufacturers of saddle soap and the typical pH of saddle soap is about 10.5. So let's talk about pH for just a second. I mean this is really pretty simple in the world of chemistry. The pH scale runs from 1 acidic to 14 alkaline with 7 being the neutral point, which is water. Now it turns out that the scale is logarithmic, and what that means is that if you go down to 6, you are 10 times more acidic than 7, down to 5, you're 100 times more acidic than 7, and the same thing is true when you go up the scale for the alkaline side. Leather is acidic. It's 4.5 to 5.0 on the pH scale. So now let's go ahead and review what we just talked about. Let's use again our, our example here of Windex. Windex is 11.45. Where would that be on this scale? Well, that would be up around in here someplace, whereas the pH of leather is down around here someplace. That differential from here to here is huge. So what happens when you have an acidic component coming in contact with an alkaline component? A chemical reaction occurs. That chemical reaction actually destroys the fiber structure of leather. So to propose to use a pH, to propose to use cleaners that are not pH consistent with leather is a, is a significant mistake. Let's also see the other effects that this could possibly have. We could possibly be talking about some, some potential staining on leather that was unintended. Now I have three different samples of leather. G given that we're in the business of leather furniture restoration, we have brought these projects, projects like these all the time. This is an ottoman that has some years on it. We can see it's got all kinds of staining uh, and related issues. Our job is to refinish this back to like new, which we're fully capable of doing. But before we do that, I want to show the effect of applying some cleaners to it. This particular piece here is the seat of a 1962 Porsche. We're going to be restoring this as well. And we can see it's got some age and, and wear related and soiling related issues too. Here's your classic office or desk chair that you'd find in a, in a well-to-do home. It has seen tons of use. Our job is to refinish it, but as we can see, we have some staining on it too. So here are three different types of leather that we're going to try to use this, the system that was recommended in the magazine. For my convenience, I'm going to pour some of the fluid into a paper plate so that I can dip a cloth into it and see what happens. Keep in mind that the key here is the pH of leather uh, as being one element of danger that you are facing in the sense that you can create 
a, um, a, a breakdown of the fiber structure of the leather, basically ruining the leather. But the other issue that we're facing is an issue of staining. So let's try uh, uh, Mr. Clean first. So what I'm going to do, I'm following the directions, I'm going to put some Mr. Clean onto a cloth and I'm going to lightly wipe or rub on a stain. So let's find a stain. How about this one right here? So I'm going to lightly wipe or rub. Blot like they suggest and let's see what we have. Now maybe I should take some of this excess soapy residue off and now we're going to move, we're going to let that sit for a minute and we're going to move over to the Porsche seat and we're going to come back and revisit that in just a second. So instead of, um, uh, instead of Mr. Clean, I'm going to use 409 on the Porsche seat and let's just see what happens. So another portion of the cloth into the 409 and let's see what happens when I blot and rub a little bit. Pulls up lots of soil. It certainly does clean. But when that dries, it's also going to leave a reference on the leather that is a protect, not, not exactly what we were hoping to have. And then finally what I'm going to do is a little bit of Windex and same process. Blot it a little bit and I'm going to go to these stains here. I'm going to damp, tamp it and rub lightly. Alright, now let's take a look and see what we've got. So now going back to this particular stain right here, you've given it an opportunity to dry but what's happening is the cleaner itself is actually leaving a reference. It didn't do anything for the stain but the cleaner itself is, has darkened the leather and so it in and of itself is creating its own stain. We go here to the Porsche seat. Well, we actually see a lightening effect, but I can also, if I feel this, it's turned the leather very tacky. Listen to this. Hear that? And so it's turned the leather tacky. Not a good thing. You wouldn't want to be sitting on this because the lint in your clothing would actually stick to the leather. And so it actually has had a negative effect on the fiber structure of the leather, which you can see the cracking. You see that? That's not such a good thing. And then finally, we're coming over to here. And while this hasn't fully dried, we actually have, a, again, a residual staining that's occurring as a function of the application of a cleaner. But the most significant component of the damage that this particular piece is going to face is the epidermal damage done by the inappropriate pH. So the moral of the story is this. You have to be very, very careful when you're, when you're cleaning leather to understand the target leather that you're actually going to be applying the cleaner to. Furthermore, any cleaner that you should apply to leather of any type should be pH balanced to the leather. It should have a pH of 4.5 to 5.0. Any one of these household cleaners certainly does not. And so you need to be really, really careful that you can actually do way more damage than good. As a leather professional who's been in the business for 23 years, clients call me up all the time saying, oh my gosh, what I have just done is cleaned my leather furniture with a household cleaner and it's, and it's made a much bigger mess than it has uh, solved for me. And it's a final point. One of the most common issues that we deal with when leather furniture at a professional level is body oil accumulation. Now body oil accumulation in leather is, has its own negative effects that are very consistent with the pH issue just in the opposite direction. Human being body output can be quite acidic. It can be much more acidic than 4.5 to 5.0. And so what happens when you have body oil in leather, if that individual's uh, body output is considerably acidic, what you have is a pH issue where, a pH damage issue where it literally rots the leather. Here's an example of an upholstery project that we're involved in where the leather has been rotted as a result of accumulation of pH. This is an armrest of a chair and you can see what happens to the integrity of the leather where it's been affected as a result of, of, a, of a pH problem or pH damage done to the leather. So be very, very sensitive to the cleaners that you use on any leather project. Uh, be very aware that you can be causing more damage than good. If you have a question, you can call a professional in your area or call us 1-800-541-5982 and we'll give you the heads up in terms of how to appropriately care for your fine leather assets. Again, this is Kevin with Advanced Leather Solutions. Thank you.